Hey family and happy new year. This is Elder Topaz and I want to welcome you to the Mirrors and Microscopes broadcast. A reflective journey in how we do leadership and how we do life in the kingdom of God. I pray that this broadcast finds you doing well and blessed and favored even in the midst of this pandemic and trying times. I want to take a few moments to continue our teaching regarding motivational gifts. This is just a reminder that the next round of broadcasts will be very targeted and informational teaching regarding the specific categories of spiritual gifts in the areas of their description, their function. We'll talk about some proclivities. We'll talk about some dangers and pitfalls and how to operate in the gifts in the right and appropriate way. Oftentimes, we tend to operate in our gifts or our supposed gifts based on how we've seen others operate in them. Now, some of them have been great models and some of them not so great. But ultimately, our concern should be effectiveness and impact, not popularity. And even greater than that, spiritual gifts flow through the power of the Holy Spirit and the fruit of the Spirit. So any gifts that operate outside of the Holy Spirit is merely a manifestation of manipulation and witchcraft. So through the dispatching of our gifts, we want to encourage, we want to edify, we want to bless and build others up, not take away any glory from God. So we want to operate in our gifts to be a reflection of him working in and through us. So we don't want others to see us. We want them to see God. All right, so let's jump right on in and pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We love you. We reverence you. We extol you. We magnify you. And we give you glory, honor, and praise. We thank you for these times and moments to truly seek your will and your plans, and your purposes for our lives regarding the kingdom of God. Help us to know and understand our gifts so we can walk in the totality of who you called us to be. Continue to lead and guide us. Give us your insight. Give us your heart. Give us your spirit as it relates to the areas of spiritual gifting. God, increase us, not only in capacity, but in wisdom and stature. Help us to be good stewards over the gifts that you have given us and help us to be good stewards over those who they are assigned to. Help us to be obedient to our assignments, period. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, so in the last session, we were able to tap into two of the motivational gifts. And they were exhortation and hospitality. So if you missed our last broadcast or any prior sessions that we've had, I want to encourage you to subscribe to my YouTube channel to listen to all of the teachings in this series. And if you have not had an opportunity to also take an assessment or inventory to find out your gifts, I recommend that you check out one of these websites. And I gave these out on the lab last broadcast. And I want to do that again on this broadcast. So if you don't know what your gifts are, or you need to do another assessment, because maybe you've changed, your seasons have changed, the times have changed, your appetites and your affinities have changed, go to one of these websites, gifts.churchgrowth.org spiritualgiftstest.com and giftstest.com. Please understand there are lots of resources out there. So this session is not the end all be all, but these are just three and just a few resources that I have utilized myself. So I would never recommend something that I have not Uh, utilize myself okay but also understand that according to the times and seasons in your life according to trials and tribulations according to where you are in your spiritual growth according to a tragedy or trauma that may have been going on in your life 
um, according to your experiences. All these things can um, influence your gifts and the priorities of your gifts. Okay, and it may cause them to shift based upon the need of your gifts, the demand of the situations and the environments that you find yourself in. So if you notice um, a shift in your passions and your burdens, the things that really weigh on your heart in regards to God, in regards to others, it's very possible that your gifts may have shifted in priority. So right now, you may be saying to yourself, what are you saying, Elder Topaz, right? This is what I'm saying. I'm saying don't be satisfied with what you knew about your gifting one, two, even three years ago. Because as we grow, we evolved and we shift. So if you are the same person you were even a year ago, I'm going to be honest. I would question that. Do you realize that we are approaching almost a year in being in this pandemic? And so I'll use myself as an example. Before the pandemic, uh, my top three gifts, and I'll just talk about the top three, were discernment, they were administration, and leadership. Of course, along with wisdom and teaching and exhortation. But because of the nature of this pandemic, my gifts shifted. So the, the priority of the gifts, they shifted to leadership and shepherding. So I'm doing more of that, uh, more teaching um, and more exhortation and encouragement due to the pandemic and its times. Now, I've always had all of these gifts in me all along, right? But because of the need and the demand for certain ones, um, they shifted based on my assignment in the pandemic. So sometimes what we go through um, or what the need is, what the demand is, uh, will cause a gift to have to go into operation in order to make sure that the assignment is completed. So these are some things just in my own life that I'll share that have shifted even in the midst of this pandemic. So what I really want to propose to you is that I felt that shift. I felt it. Now, was it uncomfortable? Is it still uncomfortable? Absolutely. And you guys know I'm going to be transparent and open with you with this journey. It has been uncomfortable. But I had to make up in my mind, am I going to be obedient to God? Or am I going to be obedient to my own limitations and my own limited knowledge? All right. So some of you may be questioning or wondering why the shift, why the change. My answer to you is pray on that. Pray on it. If you refuse to acknowledge and make the shift, I'm telling you, you are going to be frustrated. Point blank, period. So I really want you to think about this, process it, chew on it, reflect on it, pray on it. All right. So let's go ahead and continue with the rest of the gifts in the motivational gifts category. And like I said, um, before we go and dive in, I would encourage you to take notes, get a pen and paper. If you like to take notes in the notes section in your phone, do that. Um, if you want to just simply listen and process and go back and listen to this broadcast or go to YouTube, um, do that. But whatever it takes in order to really begin to get this in your spirit and really become aware of spiritual gifts, and not just for you, but for the people who are around you, the people who are in your lives, the people who you will cross paths with, is so important to be aware of who they are and their uh, proclivities, their strengths, um, their areas of growth, so that you can better understand um, who you may be co-laboring with or who you may be coming alongside or who you may just be serving with. But it's so important. So I want you to really process this information. So just as a reminder, these are what motivational gifts are. 
Motivational gifts are the gift of God's grace and all gifts operate in God's grace. But they shape how a believer views life, how they relate uh, to others, and uh, the impacts that they experience in the body of Christ. Motivational gifts often reveal the personality of God. So I don't know if you noticed the pattern so far with motivational gifts, but each one reveals a type of function or personality of God or a certain uh, characteristic of God. So motivational gifts reveal the personality of God. And just FYI, please note that some of these gifts will have some overlap with ministry and manif uh, manifestation gifts. So I just want to remind you of that. So the gifts that we've been covering in the motivational gifts category, exhortation, hospitality, uh, service and helps, so and I'm going to couple those together. Administration and leading, I'm going to couple those together. Mercy, teaching, which is an overlapping gift, and I'm going to cover that with the ministry gifts. And then also prophecy, which is another overlapping gift. And I'm going to cover that with the ministry gifts as well. So we'll go through each one. If I'm, and if I'm unable to finish, of course, I will always continue the teaching in the next broadcast. So let's go ahead and jump in. We are going to start tonight's teaching with the, uh, with the leadership and administration gift. And so administration and leading. Um, is compared to the shoulder of the body of Christ. And so um, in administration and leading, it's a special ability to steer God's people into effective channels of service by understanding the resources needed to accomplish the goals and the plans. All right. It's also a special ability of working with and through followers toward achieving biblical goals and organizational objectives. So these um, people, those who are assigned to administration and leading are a very key people in shaping the operational side of how ministry works and in shaping uh, those who come alongside in ministry endeavors to make sure that things work without a hitch to make sure things are in order. And so the basic motivation and characteristics of the gift of administration and leading, uh, they're motivated to give leadership and to coordinate activities of others. So they're willing to lead and coordinate the activities of others for the achievement of common goals. So whatever the goal of the organization is, the ministry or the entity, they are there to make sure that the coordination of activities and leadership is aligned with the big picture. All right. They see the big and overall picture in order to clarify long range goals. So as long as there are goals and vision and mission in place, then that helps the a person with the administration and leading gift to be able to line things up so that things can follow according to where the ministry or the organization or the entity is going. They give direction and they delegate. So they are great at doing that. They're not trying to do everything by themselves, but they also uh, delegate appropriately. I'll just put it like that. Uh, they motivate others to get involved to reach the goal. So they corral the troops. They corral people together. Uh, they get servants, people who have servant mindedness to come together um, in order to get things done. They have an awareness of the resources available to complete the task. So they're their go to people. Um, and then also um, they instantly evaluate a problem and assign steps to solve it. So they are problem solvers naturally. So they probably ask a lot of questions, which probably irks and get, gets on people's nerves. But you have to have these type of people in place because oftentimes they can see the roadblocks ahead of time. They uh, 
can be prophetic in nature and they can see some things that are coming forth. So they want to go ahead and put those things out there on the table so there won't be any surprises. They're always looking for solutions to problems and they will assume leadership and responsibility when there is a void in leadership. Again, these people are key people to have in any church or ministry or organization or entity because they're willing to step up to the plate when there is a void in leadership and they do it um, until the void is filled. So you need these type of people in place. What are some dangers and pitfalls of someone who operates in the gift of administration and leading? Um, They overlook major character flaws or faults in those who are useful to reaching the goal. So sometimes they see the gift in others, they see the talent, they see the skill set, but they often overlook the character flaw. Sometimes it, it gets in the way and sometimes it doesn't. But because the person who operates in that gift is so goal driven and goal minded, they will look over the character flaw in order to get the job done. So sometimes we have to be uh, real discerning uh, when operating in that gift so we can make sure that the character flaw is not going to prevent the goal from being accomplished. Uh, They can manipulate, control, or dominate others subconsciously. So not to say they're using mind control, but they want to make sure that it gets done. So sometimes they may subconsciously do it and not necessarily realize it. Uh, they can have that tunnel vision because they're trying to get it done by any means necessary. Um, they can be upset if solutions or gifts are questioned. And so because they are so driven on the goal, they can become irritated if people question um, their their tactics or they question their strategies or they question uh, their steps to get it done. So um, those of you who have that gift, um, beware of being upset when people are asking questions of you and asking questions of what the plan is and how we're going to get it done. And then also they can be proud of their power instead of walking in the humility of God's spiritual authority. And that's going to be a reoccurring theme in any gift that we talk about. We always want to be mindful not to operate in the spirit of pride. Now, how to do it right. Remember that a leader is an ultimate servant, no matter what. Um, Those who operate in this gift, you can never say thank you enough. So it may get on people's nerves, but always remember to be appreciative. Always remember to say thank you, but you can never say thank you enough. Uh, Also, value the people you serve, overseeing them as just a resource to get the job done. So be sure to build your people up. Be sure to value them because they've made that sacrifice to come alongside you to get things done. Also, model the values of the organization, which are naturally tied to with spiritual values and principles, but make sure that you embody what you are promoting. We want to be sure that we talk the talk and that we walk the walk as well. Um, But don't be afraid to ask the hard questions. So sometimes, um, you know, because there is a respect value for our team, Sometimes we don't want to push back as much or sometimes we're afraid um, of shaking up the organization or shaking up the project because we're asking some questions, some hard questions that really could affect the success of the project. But don't be afraid to ask those hard questions with respect, you know, but ask those questions because in the end, we want everyone to win. Right. So this is a win win type of situation. Ask the hard questions. Someone has to do it right. And you're assigned to do it. So do that. Some biblical role models that you can go back in scripture uh, to look at who operated in the gift of administration and of leading Nehemiah. um, Of course, a great example. We love the book of Nehemiah, a very specific talked about all aspects of administration 
and leading. Um, and that's in the book of Nehemiah chapters 2 through 6. Look at Luke 14, 28 and 30. Also great example, 1 Corinthians 12 and 28. Also looks at an example of administration and leading. And also we began this series, the entire disruption uh, and dispatching series with Joseph. And we talked about his gift of administration. And so go back and read up on uh, what he went through, through his administration and leading journey. That's in Genesis chapter uh, chapters 41 through 47. All right, next gift, next motivational gift. Let's talk about mercy, which is also compassion. So mercy and compassion. Mercy is identified as the heart of the body of Christ. Okay, mercy is identified as the heart of the body of Christ. It's a special ability to aid the suffering or the underserved. And it's the ability to care for those who suffer with acts of love that help alleviate their distress. So some basic motivations and characteristics of the gift of mercy. They're motivated to identify with and comfort those who are in distress. They're e they easily sense joy and distress in other people and are sensitive to the feelings and needs of, of these types of people. They can walk in a room or an atmosphere and instantly feel joy in the room or feel distress in the room. So they have a sensitivity to be able to feel when something is going on, when something is awry, or when there is either joy or distress in a room. They are attracted to and are patient with people in need. You need those who have the gift of mercy on your team because they're going to be able to uh, bring a sensitivity to what you're doing. So you want them to be able to identify with people's needs, identify with their hurts, identify with their distress, and be able to help come alongside you and make sure that those needs are being met and not overlooked. Um, they have a motivation and a desire to see people heal of their hurts. And like I said, uh, it's a beautiful thing to have someone um, on your team that has the gift of mercy. They truly are meek in nature and they feel an imp and, and they feel the empathy uh, with the misfortunes and misery of others. So they have a great capacity for empathy of others. Um, they are full of love, they're full of compassion, and they are very forgiving. Um, also, one of the characteristics of someone who operates in the gift of mercy, they are loyal, they're consoling, um, and they're non-judgmental. And so they show their caring with words and actions. So it's more than just giving words of encouragement, but they also back it up with actions. Now, what are some of the dangers and pitfalls of someone who operates in a gift of mercy? Um, they can be blind to others' faults and fail to be firm when necessary. Um, they'll take on the offenses of others, which can be unhealthy if you continue to take on the battles and struggles and offenses of someone else. So you don't want to take on too much because then it can become unhealthy and even toxic. Um, you, they can easily be taken advantage of or used. Um, they have trouble seeing others' motives because they're so caught up in meeting the need that they may possibly overlook uh, wrong motives. Um, they have issues with balancing mercy and justice. Um, always um, is that proclivity to operate in pride, and that's with all of the gifts. And then also, um, they have a tendency to be guided uh, by emotion rather than logic or practicality. So you have to have a balance. Um, it's okay to, to feel compassion and empathy towards someone who's going through. But we also have to see 
uh, what practical natural logic measures need to be taken as well. So there needs to be a balance. Now, how to do it right. Um, for those who have this gift, don't lose sight of the true needs of all, which at the end of the day is forgiveness and salvation. So in the midst of um, operating in this gift, we're also looking at their soul. Once we've met the need, now you need Jesus because we've already demonstrated who he is through meeting the need. But now we're concerned about your soul. So don't forget to offer salvation. Don't forget to talk about uh, key principles like forgiveness. All right. Continue to serve with love, grace and dignity. Always. We want to make sure that we represent Christ in a great way. And don't take on uh, assignments alone with this gift of mercy. Tag team with others. So you don't become overwhelmed, all right? It's always better to have partners in ministry versus doing it by yourself because you will totally become overwhelmed and exhausted and you will burn out. So join in with somebody, tag team with somebody. So what are some biblical role models or examples for those who operate in the gift of mercy? One is the Good Samaritan naturally the good samaritan in luke 10 verses 25 through 37 so go back and read that um there's an example in matthew 25 verses 34 through 40 and then also when the two blind men received their sight uh when jesus restored their sight um that was an example of mercy you have to read those scriptures to really identify with that and that's in matthew 20 29 through 30 four. Okay. And our last motivational gift, we're going to talk about serving and helps. So the gift of serving and the gift of helps. And I put those together because they're so closely related, but they represent the hands of the body of Christ. Serving and helps represents the hands of the body of Christ. Now with these gifts, It's a special ability to provide timely assistance that releases other Christian workers to do direct spiritual ministry. All right. So it's right on time. It's uh, strategic and it helps those who do direct ministry be able to do it effectively while they undergird them. Um, It's motivated uh, through the demonstration of love by meeting the practical needs of others. And those who operate in this gift, uh, they love to serve behind the scenes wherever, whenever, and wherever needed to support the gifts and ministries of others. Now, I know there's a tendency for some people to want to be in the limelight. Um, All I'm going to say is pray for them because we know at the end of the day that we need everybody. Ministry, serving requires um, a lot of people, a lot of different people, a lot of different gifts. And so every now and again, you will encounter someone whose uh, motive uh, may not necessarily be pure. But at the end of the day, most people who are serving are serving from their hearts because they really want to please God. So don't lose sight of that if every now and again you see someone uh, whose motive is not right and, and is unchecked because at the end of the day, um, normally God will remove them or they will, move, will uh, remove themselves. So just continue to stay in prayer about that. Uh, some of the basic motivations and characteristics of the gift. Those who have the gift of service detect the personal needs of others. I mean, they catch on quickly. They're able to see the personal needs of others. Uh, they have a motivation to meet the need as quickly as possible. Uh, They have a willingness to use their own personal funds to avoid delays. And so we also talked about this uh, with the gift of hospitality. They are willing to use their own money, their own funds, and their own resources uh, to know uh, and to make sure the need is met. 
And so I'm not surprised by that in this gift either with serving and helps, willing to use your own money just to make sure that the need is met. Um, some of the other things that they also, um, another characteristic or motivation um, is that they have an ability to detect when people are not sincere. And of course, um, that's a strong spirit of discernment to be able to see that people are not sincere. And sometimes it can irk you, it can frustrate you, it can rub you the wrong way, but that it happens. You're going to have people whose motives are not genuine. So you have to really lift those people up before the Lord um, so that God can turn their hearts um, in the right direction. Um, people who operate in serving and helps are gifted with spiritual insight and they attract or attach spiritual value to practical service. So they're always making sure that what they're doing has spiritual value. They're very task oriented. And they always feel compelled to help um, and serve. No task is too small. So what are some dangers and pitfalls? Uh, being proud is a reoccurring thing we've talked about. Neglecting spiritual needs over emphasizing practical needs. Uh, motives being misunderstood. Uh, being overlooked looked, and overlooking their personal comforts over meeting the needs. They have an inability to say no. And there is power in saying no if it's going to affect your health, if it's going to affect your family, if it's going to affect uh, your time. So um, don't be afraid to say no. They can isolate themselves behind the scene and they don't receive at the same level that they give. So they give, give, give. And when it's time for someone to give to them, they put their hands up and say, no, it's OK. I got it. God bless you. Go ahead. You know, but. They don't receive at the level that they give. But I want to encourage someone who uh, operates in this gift. And someone had to share this with me long years ago. When people want to bless you, allow them to bless you. Because when you say no or when you say that's okay, you're blocking their blessings with God. Because you never know what God has instructed them to do by blessing you. So don't block their blessings. Because you feel some type of way about them blessing you. Just say thank you, allow them to bless you, and pray for them. Um, but don't block their blessings with God because you feel uncomfortable with them blessing you. So that's just one thing I want to encourage you to do, uh, to receive at the same level that you give. How to do it right. Just one simple thing. Remember that when you're serving, that you're serving unto God, not to man, not to get accolades, not to get more influence and not to get clout. We serve unto God. So what are some biblical role models and examples? Uh, we have Martha in Luke 10 and John 12. She's featured in both of those chapters. Uh, Romans 16 verses 1 to 2. Uh, Mark 15 verses 40 and 41. And also Philippians 2 19 and 23. Great examples of serving and the gift of helps. So my time is up on tonight. This is just a reminder that our goal tonight was to provide insight and foundational knowledge and context to bring revelation and confirmation and encouragement so we can fine tune our identified gifts so we can explore additional gifts that reside in us and to share with others who are seeking to walk in the fullness of their gifts, callings, and assignments. Amen. Well, our next broadcast, we will shift into our next category, which is ministry gifts. And this will also include the motivational and overlapping gifts of prophecy and teaching. I pray that you have been blessed by what you learned and explored in the category of motivational gifts. I want to encourage you to go back and do research for your own edification and awareness. Do more research. All right. This was just a foundational teaching. Also, don't forget to go back, listen, process, and pray about what you discover and share. Amen. 
As always, I cannot close out our time together without offering the gift of salvation to someone who desires to give their life to Christ. All you have to do is confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. And just like that, you are saved and you're ready to begin your life as a follower and believer of Jesus Christ. I am excited for you and I celebrate you on this journey. I could not imagine living my life without Christ. And with that being said, I love you and I appreciate you. And until our next broadcast, may God continue to bless you, keep you, and favor you.